So in this video today, I'm bringing you guys an updated version of my full guide on how to migrate your current operating system to a new drive. Check, check. Now what I'm doing in this video is showing you guys how to do all of that using a completely free tool. And the tool we're going to be using today is Clonezilla. Now a lot of people do know about Clonezilla, but for the majority they take a look at it and then they just don't bother because it's a Linux based uh, software. Now for me, I absolutely love Linux and I love working with Linux. I'm going to try and make this whole video as simple as possible so everyone, even the average Joe gets this and can do it for themselves. In the last video, I actually used a software called Aomi Partition Assistant and it's from Aomi themselves, which is a company. Now in that last video, some people, not the majority, a small minority of people, uh, they thought that an operating system is like an individual entity. If you are looking for just the operating system, what you actually need to do is a clean install of Windows um, or any other operating system. But speaking of uh, doing a clean install, if you are planning on doing one, I will be doing a video on how to get Windows 10 Pro for under $13. So yeah, aside from that, let's move on to the next step. So this is the new destination drive, which is from Crucial Memory. This is the MX500. Now this is the current uh, OS drive and it's the Samsung A50 EVO. Now in terms of backing it up, I have two drives here. So the Toshiba and then I also have an internal drive. Now this is actually what I use for my backup on this machine. Now if you want to make your internal hard drive external, then you would use one of these cables. So this is SATA data and power to USB 3.0. Now the last thing you could use is a USB flash drive for the Clonezilla installation. Now the reason why I said could use is because you can actually put the installation on the destination drive and what's gonna happen then is when you do boot into it, Clonezilla will add the installation files to RAM. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. Now we can finally move on to the main steps. So what I'm gonna do now is head over to my PC and show you guys the screencast. Okay, so to get to uh, Windows Backup and Restore, you need to go to Control Panel. Uh, you can click on it from the start menu and you need to select large icon and backup and restore it's the same for windows 10 the only difference is that windows 10 has a backup and restore and then windows 7 in parentheses so yeah that's how you get to here the steps are pretty straightforward you can back up your uh, os to your external hard drive whichever you have Okay, so now we're going to sort out the new drive and allocate it. Now, remember, if your drive was already used, uh, it's going to be allocated. And um, basically, your drive needs to be shown up in computer. If it doesn't, then you need to follow this step. Otherwise, you can skip this. So what you need to do is press the Windows key and the letter R, or you can simply type in run in the start menu. So this will open up the run command and then put in disk mgmt.msc press OK and it will open the disk management. Now disk two is unallocated and that is a crucial SSD, it's a, the 500 gig one. Now what we need to do is right click and create a new simple volume. Now before you do this, if yours says um, read only on the left, uh, you won't be able to do that. This often happens on the Windows uh, machines. I did make a video on my other channel, Software Basics, so it will show you how to resolve that. So I'll link that if you want to check that out, if yours says read only. So right click, new simple volume, next, and I'm gonna allocate the whole drive, next. You can make that shorter if you want. And I'll just leave it at the default. Now I'm just gonna change the label to Crucial SSD. And then simply hit next and finish. Now if we go back to computer, you can see it's not showing up, but it says formatting and in a few seconds it's going to come up right here. So what we're going to do now for the last part is uh, download uh, Clonezilla into this destination drive uh, so we can boot from it. So just simply open up your browser and I have these two links here. So the first link is clonezilla.org 
and this is clownzilla live dock now these are pretty much all the functionalities so you can save disk image restore disk image and disk to disk clone so that's the one we need uh, if you click on this first link here it will open up this page and this is pretty much the documentation for all the steps that I'm going to show you. You can have a read through this as well yourself. I will have both links in the description. Now to download it, you need to download it through uh, Tuxboot. So this is the link here. We'll click on the first one and this will bring us to SourceForge and we can just simply download Tuxboot. Now Tuxboot has a lot of different uh, tools as well that are similar to Clonezilla, which is pretty nice. But in this uh, tutorial, obviously we're working with Clonezilla. So I'm gonna download that to the desktop. So I'm just gonna double click on it, run. And this opens up here. So this is the Tuxboot tool. Now what we can do is go here, make sure Clonezilla Live Stable is selected. So what we need to do here is make sure we select USB drive and not hard disk, although it makes sense to select hard disk, but it only defaults to uh, your C drive. Obviously you don't want to do that. So we'll select USB and then we just simply select show all drives. And if we go down, you can see we have I. And just to confirm, if we go back, you can see drive letter I is associated with this. And you can leave uh, MD5 check as well, checked. <laughs> and then just simply press OK. And this will begin downloading and installing all the files uh, that will allow you to boot up Clonezilla on your machine. And there you have it. Uh, the installation is completed. If we take a look, you can see that the files are within the crucial memory drive. So we should be able to boot from that. Now you can shut down your PC or restart it. Uh, but I'm going to restart it and we need to get into the BIOS. For my PC, it's an ASUS motherboard, so all I have to do is press delete on my keyboard and it will bring me into the BIOS. Now for you, if you're on a laptop especially, it's going to be one of the other function keys. But usually uh, motherboards such as ASUS and Gigabyte, it's usually like delete or escape. You just need to Google it and you'll be able to find out which one is for your specific motherboard. Okay, so my PC is restarting and I'm just going to get ready to start pressing delete. I'm hitting delete. You can see the message at the bottom there. And now it should take me into my BIOS. Now, if yours is set up on USB, you might have to disable secure boot and activate legacy. So for an Asus motherboard, I'm just going to quickly show you guys that. So you need to go into the advanced settings, hit OK. Now for me, my secure boot is in the boot section. And just scroll down to security boot parameters and I have other legacy and UEFI selected and then go to advanced and then go to USB configuration and you need to enable legacy USB and legacy USB 3.0 as well okay so now we're gonna head back to the easy mode so I'm gonna click on exit and ASUS EZ mode now if we click here We've boot menu. Now the one we're looking for is the crucial SSD. Now you can see it here, CT500MX. So I'm just gonna click this. Okay, so this time I restarted my PC and I used F8 just to show you that you don't have to go directly into the BIOS. You can just boot up the boot devices menu, which is this. So again, I'll go down and I'll select the CT500. And we're back in Clonezilla. Now we have 30 seconds to choose something, otherwise it's gonna automatically boot in. So what you need to do is go down to other modes. Okay, so now the seconds have disappeared. So this is pretty much the only part of the whole tutorial that's gonna require a lot of your concentration. Uh, most people will find this hard, but I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. So just use your arrow key on your keyboard and you need to select Clonezilla Live to RAM boot media can be removed later. So that's obviously what we need to do because we have a setup with the SSD already. So press enter and it's just gonna load up. There might be some errors that throw up at the beginning, but uh, it will just load up everything successfully at the end. So what that just did there is basically put everything in RAM. So now we can basically clone to the SSD 
without having any issues of disconnection with clonezilla okay so this part is pretty self-explanatory just pick your language so press enter for me on english just select the first one so i press enter there so pick the first option all right so obviously we need to select device to device so work directly from one disk or partition to a disk or partition sounds confusing but device to device is what we need so press enter then just press enter on beginner mode and then select the first option which is a disk to local disk press enter now in this part you need to be very very careful so what you have to do here is select the local disk as source so this would be your current operating system in my case that is the samsung ssd so that is the 850 evo so it's the first line right there so 250 gig as you can see so i'm going to press enter on that and now for this option what we need to do is select the target disk so where we want to clone to Please be careful with this part because you don't want to clone the destination to the source by mistake. So in this case for me, this is uh, the 500 gig. So I just press enter on that. Just select the default, which is the first one. So skip checking uh, repairing source file system. And uh, now we just choose what we want Clonezilla to do after it's all completed. I'm just going to say shut down. So enter on shut down. And now at the bottom, we're gonna start uh, confirming stuff. So press enter first to continue. So if we take a closer look, uh, it actually tells us the existing um, data on the crucial SSD will be lost, which makes sense because that's what we're cloning to. So that's how you kind of know if you've picked the right one, where it tells you your uh, destination drive just at the end. So we'll say Y for yes to confirm, press enter. It's gonna ask you that again one more time, Y and enter. So at this point, it might take a while depending on how big your uh, current drive is. So what you can just do is relax. It tells you the percentage there, so Go do something and come back to this. Okay, so that's just completed there and it's powered off. It only took about uh, 13 to 15 minutes. Okay, so now that that's done, the last part, what I'm gonna do is actually disconnect the old SSD. It's still on the power, but I've disconnected it and I have just this SSD still connected. So that's the one, the new SSD, if you're missing out on all the stuff. So now I'm just going to power this on. I'm going to boot into the BIOS. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into F8. Now, one thing that you should take a look at, if we see where it says Windows Boot Manager, it's already assigned to uh, the MX500. So that's kind of why I disconnected it as well. So you can see that, that it's only assigned to the new uh, destination drive. Windows Boot Manager is always picked first in the boot order anyway. So essentially I could have just restarted my PC or even powered it on and it would have booted straight into the MX500. But uh, that's only because I'm on ASUS motherboard. Some laptops don't let you do that. You would actually have to change it manually yourself. But that's how you do it. So what I'm gonna do is just click on this and you can see now it's uh, starting Windows. And as you can see, it's pretty much the way I left it. So what we're going to do now is just uh, log in. So there's one more thing that we need to change. If we go to computer, you can see that it's still allocated its space to the old SSD. Don't panic if you see this. Uh, if we actually press the start key, then we type in disk part all one word and then launch the disk parts tool if I say list disk now you can see this tells you the actual size so you can just do the run command and go back to disk MGMT you can see that disk 0 is in fact the C drive 
and this time I'm going to say list volume. So what we need to do is say select volume C. And it tells us volume one is selected. You can also say select volume one. So just make sure you confirm it. That's why it's good to say list volume at the beginning. Now, all we have to do is just simply say extend. If that doesn't work, you can say attributes volume clear hidden. And then once the unallocated space is unhidden, this time we can now say extend. So it does take a few seconds to load up and everything does go slow for a little bit because it's your C drive. But as you can see, it's now extended over to the unallocated space. And if we open up computer, you can see that it's now assigned. Uh, you will have to rename the drive, but that's completely okay. All right, so the last thing you can do now is take out the old drive and replace it with the new one, close up your system, and you're good to go. So as you can see, I look pretty tired, and that is just because uh, trying to record this and get all that done. I'm really glad I did this video because I think it's gonna help out a lot of people, um, especially when you guys need to save money. Um, there's no point in spending money on the likes of Aomi Partition. They're absolutely gonna hate me for saying that. But honestly, there's always tools like this, and if you kind of dabble into Linux and all that stuff, you'd easily find so many tools for all the stuff that you paid for in terms of uh, software. But yeah, I hope this really helped you out. If it did, please make sure to leave a like. If you have any questions at all, please leave it in the comment section down below. And of course, most importantly for myself, uh, please make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.